If you're looking to maximize muscle growth, avoid these seven protein mistakes. Welcome back, Dr. Milo Wolf here today, PhD in sports science, distant relative of Albert Einstein with whom I have three things in common. First, we're both obsessed with physiques. Two, great hair. And three, we're both scientists. Without further ado, let me explain some of the most common protein mistakes I see being made and how to fix them. First, and this is a common mistake more so in beginners, is just not having enough protein. There's a lot of confusion out there around how much protein you need. And I think a lot of beginners are reluctant initially to get their protein in. And how much protein do you need? Well, a meta regression on the effects of protein intake in people who lift and how that impacts their hypertrophy was published by Morton and colleagues. When looking at a variety of studies, this was the optimal protein intake. 1.6 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day. So if you're currently having less protein than this, there's a good chance you'll see more muscle growth by getting your protein intake up to 1.6 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day. The next big mistake that is still super common in the fitness industry is thinking that your body can only use so much protein in a single meal for muscle growth. And this leads to people thinking they need to have at least four meals per day with a lot of protein each to maximize muscle growth. Because if they sit down and have too much protein all at once, that your body just wastes it. And that's just not true. In fact, a recent study by Tromlin and colleagues actually compared having 25 grams of protein to having 100 grams of protein right after a lifting session and how your body uses that protein. And in contrast to what a lot of people think, when consuming 100 grams of protein in a single meal after a training session, your body actually used that protein for muscle growth for at least 12 hours after that meal. And if you look at how much of that protein your body just oxidized or essentially burnt off, it wasn't very much. So don't approach your protein intake with this all or nothing mentality. Just because you can't have three or four meals per day with lots of protein in it, still try to hit your total daily protein intake. Even if that means having one or two really large protein feedings, that is still going to be better for muscle growth than falling short of your total daily protein goal. And don't think that your body can only use so much protein in a single meal for muscle growth. That threshold for how much protein your body can use at once for muscle growth is going to be higher than anything you'll ever practically actually do. That is, unless you fast for like five days of the week, which I wouldn't recommend for muscle growth. And since we're talking about fasting, let me give you mistake number three, and that's having your last meal within the day very early. So we just spoke about a study by Tromlin and colleagues where they looked at the time course of muscle growth after having 100 grams of protein at once. And indeed, it seemed like your body uses protein for at least 12 hours after a big meal, after a training session in this case, for muscle growth. And so when might this be useful? Well, when you're sleeping, right? Because you're asleep, you're not having any additional meals. And so by having a bigger protein feeding as late as possible in the day, you may actually see more muscle growth by essentially growing in your sleep. And while there's not a ton of evidence out there yet, I think it's a kind of neutral to positive effect strategy, where as long as you're hitting your total daily protein intake, I think having a larger protein feeding later in the day and just making sure that it's happening, ideally as close to sleep as you can get away with without it impacting your sleep, is at the very least not going to harm your muscle growth and I suspect may actually cause you to grow more muscle. So try having a larger protein feeding, say between 40 and 60 grams for most people, as close to bedtime as possible. The next mistake is a big one in beginners, and that's a lack of consistency in getting your protein in day to day. Alongside insufficient focus on getting your daily protein intake high enough, I see a lot of beginners not have a ton of consistency in making sure that each of your meals has a protein source. For most people, unless you specifically focus on having a protein source in each of your meals, say one for breakfast, one for lunch, one for dinner, it can get quite challenging to get sufficient protein in each meal to be optimal for muscle growth. For example, for breakfast, you might want to use milk and whey protein as part of your overnight oats. Maybe for lunch, you use chicken. Maybe for dinner, you use some beef. Just thinking about how to get protein in, whether you're a vegan, you're an omnivore, you're anything else, is helpful in making sure that you get protein in day to day consistently. And if you struggle, one huge thing beginners don't do that they may want to consider is just making certain meals of the day more consistent day to day. 
For example, starting every morning off with overnight oats. Ultimately, just like with exercise, it's all about consistency. Just because you have a lot of protein on Monday doesn't mean much if the rest of the week you're not being consistent. Next up is a mistake that used to be huge in the fitness industry, and that was being obsessed with the anabolic window. The anabolic window was essentially the idea that your muscles are very responsive to protein intake around a training session, and that this will boost muscle growth tremendously. Well, what does the evidence actually say about the anabolic window? The idea that you need to have protein close to a session or even immediately after a session to maximize muscle growth. Well, a review paper by Schoenfeld and colleagues said the following. Based on current evidence, it appears clear that any effect of protein timing on muscle hypertrophy, if in fact there is one, is relatively small. Total daily protein intake is by far the most important factor in promoting exercise-induced muscle development. Research shows that the anabolic effect of an individual mixed meal lasts up to six hours. And in fact, like I just mentioned, that study by Trollman and colleagues shows it can actually last longer than that. Thus, provided that such a meal is consumed within about three to four hours prior to a workout, or possibly even longer, depending on the size of the meal, the need for immediate post-exercise nutrient consumption is abated. To make a long story short, as long as you're not training faster in the morning and not having protein for hours afterwards, and you've had some protein in the past few hours before a session, or you're having some protein in the past couple hours after the session, you likely don't need to worry about the anabolic window whatsoever. But the next protein mistake is a really common one, and that's having more protein than you actually need. Now this is an odd one, because having more protein than you actually need isn't really going to cost you much muscle growth. However, it is going to cost you in terms of how much money you spend and potentially cause a bit more pollution than might be warranted. The reason this is common is because people use, for example, the one gram of protein per pound rule. This is actually quite a bit higher than the protein requirement for maximum muscle growth I mentioned earlier in this video. One gram per pound is about 2.2 grams per kilogram versus 1.6 being ideal. So there's a whole 0.6 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight between those two that isn't necessarily helping with muscle growth. So while the one gram per pound rule is certainly convenient, it is actually causing you to consume more protein than is beneficial and might be costing you in terms of your wallet. There is also a slight downside to having more protein than you need to in the sense that if you're having more protein, you're having fewer carbs and fats. And a lot of carb sources especially have a lot of fiber, like for example, fruits, vegetables, etc. They also bring you a lot of phytonutrients, vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, all of which do contribute positively towards your health. In the meantime, these protein sources, when you're already having this much protein, they don't really do anything positive or negative for your health. And so you're missing out on the opportunity cost of having more fruits and vegetables in your diet. So between costing you more and making you miss out on having more nutritious foods within your diet, I think having too much protein is probably a mistake. And the final myth, and this is still somewhat common more so in the general population, is thinking that peanut butter, for example, is really a protein source. Now, in the strictest way, it is a protein source. It does have some protein, it has more protein than many other foods, but if you actually look at the protein to calorie ratio, it's pretty poor. For example, for you to get 40 grams of protein from peanut butter in a single meal, which 40 grams is something you might want to aim for, in a lot of meals for protein intake, that would take you over a thousand calories. For most people, they can't afford to have a thousand plus calories in a meal without that making them go substantially over their daily calorie intake goal. Can you enjoy peanut butter in your diet? Absolutely. But just be clear that it's not the best protein source of all time. And by the way, this applies to other foods too. For example, why fat-free Greek yogurt can be a great protein source with a good protein to energy ratio, a full fat yogurt on the other hand, often has a far worse protein to energy ratio. So always try and stay mindful of how many calories does this food have versus how much protein it gives you. This is especially important during a cut and maybe less so important during a bulk. Those are seven mistakes I commonly see being made when it comes to protein intake. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, please comment, like, subscribe. If you want to see me break down any more myths or talk about any more research, leave a comment down below and I'll get to it. In the meantime, if you want coaching, consider checking out my website somewhere above here for me to coach you in your training and diet. Thank you for your time. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you next time. Peace.